Hi and welcome back. Keeping safe, I hope. Viewers have been asking me this question about the Atlas comet crashing into Earth in May. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, right. Pull the other one. But maybe they're onto something. I pretty well ignored any conspiracy theory about a comet hitting the Earth because comets are kind of fuzzy balls of snow and ice and some rocks, I guess. And they're far more attracted to our sun, which is a, has a larger mass than our tiny Earth. So they tend to go towards the sun. The chances of them hitting our planet are minor. But this one's really interesting. So I sadly failed to take much interest in this comet called Atlas. And so I thought, why is it called Atlas? Atlas? Hang on. I know what Atlas is. So a few years ago, I made a series of films on the Atlas project. So the Atlas project is fantastic. It's based in Hawaii. It's a set of wide field telescopes that are scanning the night sky and tracking near earth objects to give, as the project leader says, a month's notice for a country killer and a week's notice for a city killer. So how it works is they have two telescopes and they're hoping to have more to cover the whole of the planet. And they take a wide field view picture of the night sky and they take multiple wide field views of the night sky and anything that changes in brightness or moves is spotted by some very clever software written and controlled by Larry Deneau. Now I know about this because I made a film with Larry. So what's this got to do with the Atlas Comet? Hey, it turned out that Larry and the team found the comet. That's why it's called Atlas. Do Simon. <laughs> so let me actually now tell you about the Atlas Comet from people I know. So it was first spotted on December the 28th, 2019. And there's a tiny little thing that popped up in the wide field view. But then something amazing happened. Between February of 2020 and March of 2020, the little blobby got 4,000 times brighter. Uh-oh. So the Atlas Project in Hawaii report any sightings to the Minor Planet Society in Boston who track all these new objects, and they took it seriously. It's increased brightness from magnitude 17 to magnitude 8, if I've got those figures right. <laughs> I think so. And it's coming into our solar system. And the people who are worried are wrong. But interestingly, on the 23rd of May, 2020, it will be closest to the Earth and should be very visible in the night sky as it doesn't hit the Earth, but zooms past and will go around the sun. They think that the orbit, they can work this out pretty accurately now from its trajectory, will last 6,000 years. So if you miss it this time, you can see it in 6,000 years time. But in fact, they think that by coming into our solar system, it will slow down a bit. So they don't know the exact figure, but come back in a few thousand years and you can see it again. So of course, it's the ideal opportunity to show my film again with Larry Deneau. He's the software engineer for the Atlas team and he explains in this short film how they find death plunge asteroids. The truth is up there. My name is Larry Deneau, and I'm the Senior Software Engineer for the Atlas Telescope Project, a project looking for death plunge asteroids as they approach the Earth. So the way Atlas will look for asteroids is every single night that the weather is good, Atlas will try to visit a location on the sky four times per night. And the reason why we use four times is that lets us find objects that are moving at that part of the sky. 
So over the course of the night, we'll take about a thousand exposures with our camera. A star and an asteroid from a single image are completely indistinguishable. Right? They're point sources that are in the image. But if you take a uh, exposure at the exact same part of the sky later on in time, an asteroid will have moved a little bit in, uh, on the sky. So over four images, we'll see a dot that's moving kind of in a straight line. You know, we basically, our algorithms play dot to dot with these sources. And when it finds four in a row, we say, okay, that's probably an asteroid. So our reductions will find these sources in the images, which will basically produce coordinates on the sky for where these things are in a brightness. And then once we've determined that they're unknown, um, then we'll send those positions to the Minor Planet Center. Now they work with um, JPL and, uh, and a European organization called ASDIS, which does hazard analysis of uh, near-Earth objects. And so it may be so that the asteroid completely misses, which means that the asteroid orbit is known so well that we know it's not going to hit the Earth, or it may have may intersect the Earth, right? And at that point, you know, the hazard calculation is said, okay, there's a uh, you know non trivial likelihood that this object will hit the Earth. Let's you know, continue to follow it, monitor it, and see what we can say about it. Now, for an asteroid that's on an impact trajectory just a few days out, the early orbit from it may say that this object could be dangerous. Um, the Minor Planet Center will issue requests for follow-up. Those may happen within hours. And so the, the hazard of that asteroid can be known easily within, you know, four to six hours. Once the asteroid's orbit is um, refined and believed to be very dangerous, so may hit the Earth, you know, the protocols for how the hazard is uh, communicated to the public if it needs to be, are still, those protocols are still being refined. You know, it's not something that has been practiced really. And, um, but because of uh, events like the Russian meteor impact last year, there's more interest from, you know, governmental agencies like FEMA um, and so on to, you know, understand the hazard, um, what the numbers mean, how serious the threat is, and then how you might mobilize uh, a population if, you know, where they live is, you know, under, um, is um, under threat of impact. So the Pathfinder telescope is a uh, smaller version of an Atlas telescope that we put together to allow us really just kick the tires on um, the location where we expect to build the Atlas Telescope. And so we've taken a, uh, this small telescope um, and brought it to our site at Mauna Loa. And uh, just a few weeks ago, we installed the telescope um, with the cameras on it. Um, we tested our ability to control the dome while we were there um, and focus the camera and whatnot. So at this point, um, we have a uh, actual telescope there that we can, at night, from here in Honolulu, we can open the dome point it at the sky, take astronomical images, and find asteroids. So we just recently were, were able to um, get some data reductions working on these images. So they're kind of non-standard astronomical images because they come from these 35 millimeter cameras. Um, but we have been able to produce accurate positions for the sources in the exposures um, and find you know, known asteroids in there. So these cameras and this telescope are nowhere near as sensitive as the Atlas telescope will be, but it's letting us um, get used to the environment up there, you know, learn how the weather works, uh, learn how the dome works, um, learn what the um, observing conditions will be like night to night, um, you know, which are all independent of the actual telescope that's there. And so we're hoping that by the time the telescope is finished, we've got all of that other stuff understood so that we're ready to go when the telescope's uh, installed. <laughs>